Hi everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell. I'm in my studio in the middle of Philadelphia. It's another cold, rainy spring day. And I want to talk to you today about the various components that go into making whole art. I've been sharing with you how important it is to connect with your authentic voice, going on your own personal treasure hunt to figure out what is at the core of your expression and then how that informs the way you make work that's compelling and then how those two things add up to how you show up as an artist in the world. But really at the crux of it is your artwork and making work that is intellectually engaging through your particular use of composition that connects deeply for people emotionally uh, through the way you orchestrate color and the kind of marks that you make and then the physicality of the uh, medium that you're working with how are you using tools and the particular medium of your choice to convey that personal expression and the orchestration of composition so that the end result is a painting where people are intellectually engaged, they have an understanding of what they're looking at, it may not be recognizable but it's familiar because of the structure of the composition. It touches people emotionally and the way you have orchestrated the use of your materials is done in such a way that it is integrated with the composition and the voice as opposed to getting in the way. So when these three things are fully integrated, the experience of looking at a painting is really one where no words come to mind, except for maybe, wow, I really like this painting. Often people will say, I don't know anything about art, but I like your work, and I, and I don't know why. That's actually the, the kind of response that you want to get, because it means that people are having this whole experience. So how do you do this? How do you make whole art? Well, over the years of explaining to people or um, answering the question that a lot of students have for me, which is, how do you do what you do? I've come to understand that I basically go through four phases in the making of an abstract painting. That sometimes it's a linear process, sometimes it's not, but if you break down the process, it really falls into four different categories from the beginning to the end. And so I'm gonna share with you what those four phases are. And then in subsequent videos, I'll be going through each phase individually for you. So here are the four phases. The first one is what I call reckless abandon. So that's really in response to, you know, how do you get started? How do you get started without thinking about something? And my answer is, well, actually the first time was, well, you sort of, you know, you sort of throw caution to the wind and you go into reckless abandonment. And someone corrected me and said, well, it's really reckless abandon. So what is reckless abandon? Reckless abandon is when you are, you basically check your thinking at the door and kind of get into your quiet space inside yourself and you tune into how you're feeling, what colors may be coming to mind, what particular tool feels like the right tool to start with, as opposed to what you think or how you think you should start. And then you just get started and I always find that the best way to really get out of my head and connect to that nonverbal, more intuitive, unconscious place inside me is to listen to music and to actually have music in my ears, even if there's absolutely nobody else around. 
something about having the music be inside you that allows your mind to, to um, allows you to kind of disconnect from your thinking. And some people find music distract distracting. That's really up to each individual. For me, it helps me get out of my my head, and then I just start to paint. And so the painting on the wall right here is an example of the end of my Rex Bandit. And I started with orange and came in with some, some light yellow, which you can't really see here. I started applying the paint with a squeegee and then ended up using a um, natural bristle brush to push the paint around. So there's a lot of marks, br uh, brush marks in the piece. And in the end, it all got sort of blended together, except for having the dark area at the bottom. And I can guarantee you that when I started, I had zero percent understanding or expectation for where I was going to go. So people say, but I'm scared. This is a blank canvas. And I always say, well, the only way to really get started is with 0% expectations and 100% kindness for yourself. Because without kindness, without, um, without feeling like whatever you do is fine, you're unable to let go of expectations. So if you could truly come in with 0% expectations and total non-judgment and acceptance for yourself and what's going to happen, then the fear melts away. So that's a short description of the first phase, which is reckless abandon. The second phase is when you come to sort of a natural end take your music out, and you turn and you look at the piece and you say, all right, what do I have here? What do I like? What do I dislike? Is there anything I like? What's the area that I'm most interested in? Um, how do I feel about the overall colors? Is there anything that's inviting me to go back in? And while you're doing that, it's important to turn it in all different directions and say, okay, do I like it better this way? Do I like it better this way? Maybe like this. And back again. Or maybe one of those other directions is more pleasing to you. So you end up going back into it in a different direction. So from there, that's the second phase. The second phase is what I call critical analysis. And it's very important to be aware of what that means in the sense that you're asking yourself questions that help you move forward in the piece as opposed to judgmentally criticizing what you've done. So I really want you to hear the difference between critical analysis and judgmental criticism. Judgmental criticism sounds like this. Wow, I really hate these colors. I don't like anything that I've done. I feel really frustrated. Whatever I do seems to come out in a way that I don't really like it. So already I feel like, what's the point? I don't really feel like going back into this piece because I really dislike it. So a way to think about this differently so that it encourages you to keep going is, all right, well, there's very little here that I like, so Rather than getting into the piece and trying to make it work from where it is, I'm just going to keep going and wrap this in and see what happens. What other colors would I like to work with? So I feel much more inclined to keep going after I think 
about the painting in the second form as opposed to the first form where I have talked myself out of feeling anything positive about this painting. So that's the second phase and the phrase that I often share with people for the second phase is um, make sure that you are critically analyzing as opposed to judgmentally criticizing the painting. So now we're going to move on to the third phase, which is what I call integration. What does that mean? That means that we need to integrate that intuitive voice, that emotional output from the first phase of reckless abandon with the strategic thinking of the second phase of critical analysis so that you're moving forward with both the emotional connection and your compositional decision making so that you have to remain aware of the fact that a painting in order to really talk to people has to have a composition that um, translates the emotive, intuitive voice. Um, but if you end up going forward and you get so hooked on just trying to solve the composition, you lose that emotional connection that you have from the, from the very beginning. And so at a certain point you say, you know what, I've lost my feeling for this piece. I don't like it anymore because you've been spending most of your time just trying to solve the compositional issues. If you love what you've done in Reckless Abandon to the point where you don't want to wreck it, you don't want to lose anything that you have, you're sacrificing the potential of the painting becoming a really strong painting that speaks to a greater population of people because you're too attached to the way it makes you feel now. But I guarantee you that a painting where the composition and the color and mark and the emotive feeling in the painting are fully integrated, it's going to hold your attention way longer than a painting where the colors are just phenomenal but the composition isn't engaging. So the third phase is about integrating your emotional, intuitive voice with your compositional decision-making process. And they inform each other as you go back and forth between those, the two of them. And then the fourth, fourth phase is what I call resolution. How do you know when the painting is finished? So many people ask me that question. How do I know when, how do you know when your painting is finished? How do I know when it's finished? Um, and so in response to that question and in, in my own um, journey of trying to always making, trying to always make my paintings better, um, I've come up with what I call certain compositional checkpoints. And so I ask myself questions in these particular checkpoints. And they have to do with how the composition um, pulls your eye around the whole piece. Is there dynamic movement or static movement? Is there any one area that holds your eye longer than another area at the expense of the whole experience? And then the last checkpoint is throw out all the checkpoints, checkpoint. How does it make you feel? Could you look at it for a really long time? Could you look at it at different times and get different things from it? If you walk by it and you haven't seen it in a while, does it make you feel a certain way? And if the answer to those questions is yes, then it's finished. And sometimes you need to let it what I call marinate before you know for sure. But if the answer to how does it make you feel, could you look at it for a long time, does it feel special? You have that sort of fluttery feeling when you look at it. And if the answer is no, 
And at the same time, the composition works beautifully. That means it's not finished because it isn't holding you on all levels. So then it's incumbent upon us to look at the painting and say, okay, what do I need to do? What, what's missing and what do I want to push? What's the story here? Oh, what's the spirit? What's the, even in total abstract expressionism, there's a story that an artist is trying to sell, tell. Even if it's just, I want to celebrate orange, you know? It can also be something very deeply personal, but the paintings where the artist has a sense as they go along the way in the development of the painting, of what this painting is about, are paintings that um, speak to people on a deeper level. So in subsequent videos from here, I'm going to be going into each of these phases in detail and I hope that you'll be interested in, in watching them. And if you enjoyed watching this, please like it and um, subscribe to my channel. And then I invite you to go to my website, Whole Artist Mastery, and download the booklet, which is free, my gift to you. And it actually has the compositional checkpoints outlined in the booklet, so you're welcome to look at that. And um, we'll be talking about these things as we go. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much for watching.